again for body paragraphs. You'll see that the body paragraph is just like a teal essay structure, but you're doing the two E's twice. You're doing one evidence and explore for text one and one for text two. So what should go in your topic sentence? Your topic sentences should be ideas based, they should be strong, clear and concise. And if it's not the first body paragraph, then your second and third should also have a transitional phrase. Your topic sentence should be short, sharp, to the point and idea based. And then you want to move into your evidence. Text one, let's call text one black diggers and text two can be longest memory. With your first bit of evidence, be selective. Don't retell too much. It's part of the criteria that you have a highly relevant and selective use of evidence so make sure you don't just ramble on like I'm doing now. Quotes, keep a minimum of two per text. You can do as many as you like. You want your quotes to be short and sharp so 10 words max. Don't sit there and count 10 words but just use that as a guide and if you find that you're getting a really long quote then you probably don't need the whole thing. Pick the most important part of the quote out and make sure you blend it in. Once you've got your evidence in you want to explore that evidence using meta language and referring to the author's views and values. That's really important and I'll show you with the sample what I mean by that. It's not just the character themselves saying the thing, it is the author choosing to have the character say those things. Whitechapel is not a real character, he is a figment of de Guard's mind. So make sure that you take that distance when you're exploring the evidence that you've put in. Do that for text one, then move into text two with a transition phrase. Evidence, explore the evidence and make some passing references back to text one as well and I'll show you an example of how to do that as well. Make sure when you're doing this that there is a balance between the two texts. You don't want to have a lot of evidence for one and very little for the other. The other thing you want to make sure that you do is that you feel free to mix up. You don't have to have evidence explore in that order. You can explore first, then put the evidence in to prove what you've said, and then do the reverse. Don't stick to the order of the two E's. Finish your paragraph with a link. Some people struggle with this. Like I find with comparative, it's actually a bit easier to link because you've just explored two different texts. The link is bringing those two texts back to the same idea and linking it back to the topic sentence and the prompt. It's probably easier to show you what I mean by that. So let's have a look at a high range sample. So the T is at the top, one of the strongest elements espoused in the text, oh I love that word, is the concept that respect is the strongest reward given for loyalty. Short, sharp, to the point, it's an idea based statement. I would probably assume this is the first paragraph just because it started with one and I assume the next body paragraph would, set, would start with something like another important aspect. You can see here the green is the explore. They've explored the idea and then put the paragraph in to prove their point. See what I mean by reversing it? You don't have to go evidence explore, you can go explore evidence. De Guard designs the very fabric of his protagonist Whitechapel to have desire to be respected by both slave and owner as his driving quality. A respect that is received because of his unquestioning loyalty to the social order. Note that it is De Guard designs his, his character to feel this way, to have this desire in order to achieve this effect. He unreservedly defends the status quo, advising against education, freedom and rebellion, instead advocating himself as a model slave. So you don't have to overdo the, the author focus, you can mix it up a little bit but make sure it's there, you don't want to just focus on the character. You can see here that I've transitioned into the second text by saying right follows a similar disposition shown through various vignettes while fighting in the trenches the indigenous soldiers that see themselves as equal. This is also shown through the character of Nigel like Whitechapel. So see here the bits here that are underlined that's what I was talking about when I said you want to in that second text evidence and explore bit refer back to the first a little bit. It doesn't have to be substantial just a little phrase like this shows that you're talking about them both, you're comparing them both. And then we're ending with a linking sentence. Both authors show that respect is a powerful reward in keeping the suppressed loyal. However, its limitations show it to be a hollow gift that is easily retracted. It is not the exact same sentence as the top one, but as they've explored the evidence, they've come to the point that while it is a strong, powerful reward, it has its limitations. They've taken that topic sentence, they've looked at the evidence that they've put in there, and the conclusion that they've drawn based on that evidence is that it's an important reward but it has its limitations. 
Here's a mid-range sample. You'll see here that this blue section is the focusing on the character rather than the author. See if you notice the difference between the high range and the mid range. The long, in the longest memory, the protagonist Whitechapel wants to be respected more than anything, and he receives this as, as a reward from both slaves and masters because he is very loyal. Expression aside, you'll see that it's focused on Whitechapel. Whitechapel wants to be respected more than anything, rather than saying De Gua shapes his protagonist Whitechapel to want to be respected more than anything. See the difference? It's slight, but it's significant in terms of the higher order thinking that you are doing or demonstrating. Here they've used one, two, three, four, five quotes to prove the exact same point. You don't need five to prove the same point. Pick the two most important ones and don't have really big long quotes. Just pick the part of the quote that you need. If you were white, I would have wanted you as my own fa as my father. The most important bit would have been wanted you as my father so you wouldn't have to have that whole thing. Have a look back at the high range sample and you'll notice that it's much more controlled in the high range. It doesn't need to have four or five different quotes to prove the one point. And also the way the quotes are blended in, who says he is, who said saying. It's quite a uh, basic way of, of transitioning into quotes. When I'm talking about blending your quotes in, a more sophisticated way uses the part of the quote that's absolutely important and blends it into their existing sentence. With the green part here, it's slipping into retail and the reason I can tell it's slipping into retail is because I'm looking at this topic sentence. Both texts show that the main reward given for loyalty is respect and this sentence says, however his loyalty also leads him to kill his own son Chapel when he tells the overseer where to find Chapel and then he is whipped to death. What does that have to do with the main reward given for loyalty is respect? There's no mention of respect here. It doesn't add to the argument that they're making. Uh, doesn't need to be there. Slipping into retail. That can be saved for another point or can be uh, condensed much further. And here you'll start to see the expression is slipping into a much more si simplistic phrasing. There's not the vocab or control that the higher one shows. You'll also notice when you look here that there is no reference in the second section of this paragraph to the first text. So it's just entirely a block basically. You have a block of longest memory, you have a block of black diggers. You don't have that reference back in there. It's going to limit you from lifting to a high range. This is a low range. How about you have a turn now and see what changes you would make to this paragraph. Thinking about blending in evidence, thinking about the sophistication of the vocab, thinking about exploring both texts, etc etc have a read what advice would you give it feel free to pause the screen to do that if you're having trouble with transition phrases this is a really good list of transition words you might want to use if you're still confused a little bit about meta language go here if you want to look at embedding quotes like a boss go have a look at Lisa's channel she is amazing I love her work and please join me again for conclusions